Hello Borough fans, welcome to the third half and our end of season review. A bit more relaxed surroundings this week, the sun's shining. Uh, unfortunately it didn't shine on our end of season but there you go, we'll talk about that uh, tonight. Uh, tonight I'm joined by the Borough Fan TV family, I've got AJ T with me and Guesty. Welcome to the show guys. Welcome, thanks Cheers, James. Thanks very much. Um, so, like I said, we've reached the end of the season. Didn't deliver what we hoped for in August. Um, however, as Borough fans, we're all well used to saying there's always next season. We'll yeah. go again then, yeah. won't we? Yeah. Um, we're going to take a light-hearted look at the last nine months in the world of Borough and see what the summer might have in store for us and beyond that as well. <coughs> as always, like I say, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it, guys. Hopefully you'll enjoy the show tonight. So, lads, before we start, this is a big one, this. Gary Monk's Gilet or Tony Pulis' tracksuit. AJ, what do you reckon? Tracksuit. Tracksuit. Pulis oh, is a G. It's got to be a tracksuit. Tracksuit, yeah. Say, he's, a, he's a club shop genius. Yeah, you know he is. What I mean? Yeah, Ca and caps, trainers, everything yeah. in it. Oh, yeah. straight out the club shop. It's all about the outfit, <laughs> isn't it? It's all he, about the outfit. He doesn't need a wardrobe, does he? He just nips in the <laughs> middle of the FC retail and gets himself out, comes out brand new. <laughs> she lays a bin, then everyone. Okay. Yeah. Right, Gary Monk era. We'll start with that, AJT. Um, when did the concern start to surface with you in terms of was it the transfer policy? What, what was you it when you said the alarm bells ring? I'm always about giving a manager time, yeah. personally. Um, you know, and it was kind of like, yeah, okay, I was, I was a little bit worried, but at the same time, I was thinking, you know, results results might get a bit better. Mm. So, which it did, obviously, obviously, Borough beat Sheffield Wednesday 2 1, and then he got sacked, and everyone was like, I don't know, maybe just won that game. Gave him yeah. behind, great second half from the game 2 1, they get sacked, and I was kind of a bit gutted for him because I thought, well, at least give him a season. Do you know what I mean? At least try and see the season out and see what happens, you know what I mean? But panic. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it was three three, was it against uh, Brentford at home? Was that the one? Two two. That was two two. two, two. Yeah, two, yeah, two. Yeah. I say, and that was when I was kind of thinking to myself, hang on a minute. This is, I mean, especially the three 0 at home against Derby. That's when it all starts to. Yeah. Panic side start to go off in your head. Then everything. When, yeah. when do you think Monk come in? He, he he had the pressure. He had the money. I think it's the first time he's had money to spend. Yeah. And I think he was a bit like a kid in a sweet shop. Yeah. But then he also had the pressure of Steve Gibson's words. We're going to smash the league. Yeah. And us being gullible Borough fans, Steve Gibson said yeah. we're going to smash the league, so we all thought yeah. that was true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like you say, we went to Wolves, should have came away with a point apart yeah. from a slip from Ayala. That's right. And then we seemed we started quite well. We weren't conceding goals, mm -hmm. uh, but my concern started with Monk was the QPR game at home. Right. Yeah. Where yeah. we were comfortable one nil at half time. Maybe should have been two or three. Mm -hmm. And then. For me, that was a collapse of our back four because Ben Gibson and Randolph had that bit of a mix-up. Yeah. And for me, it, it just went. We went from a run of clean sheets to yeah. conceding silly goals near, near yeah. enough every game. I think that's where it started for me. James, yeah. a three-two game. And I think there was also like a bit of uncertainty. I think uncertainty amongst the players because they didn't seem to know quite what was expected of them or what the team was going to be. And I think that spread to the the terraces as well because yeah. the fans were like. I haven't got a clue what team he's yeah. going to pick this week and how we're going to set up. Middlesbrough weren't the only team guilty of it, yeah. but a lot of the championship teams at the beginning of the season for some reason were pulling the centre halves really wide apart mm -hmm. when the goalkeeper had possession. Um, on the Borough's case, our centre halves are pulling up wide apart and us as fans, it looked like Adam Clayton was pulling yeah. that all yeah. and taking the ball short yeah. and straight away you are bereft in your midfield of a ball winning midfield player yeah. if that ball, in most cases, gets hoofed up. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that was really exposing us playing that way. Yeah. But we weren't the only team in the championship playing that way no. at that time for, yeah. for some reason. I don't know. I always felt a bit nervous, I thought. After a while, I thought a bit nervous seeing going to Riverside and that. Welcome to Walton Tuesday. You, always, you, didn't, you almost didn't know what to expect yeah, every game, was it? Yeah, yeah. I would use that phrase. You yeah. didn't know what team Nothing was going to be Nothing was guaranteed. It was trying yeah. to nerve right? Especially when Randolph used to get the ball back and then... You would hoof it sometimes, obviously, like seen against. But like you say, we went through that. a spell with Randolph and Gibson where they didn't know what each other were doing. Yeah. And yeah, you, yeah. your mouth, your heart was in your mouth yeah. whenever there was a back pass yeah. on or Randolph yeah. was coming out to claim yeah, it. Yeah. It was like from going from what we had for the, like, the couple of years before with Karanka, where you knew exactly what the game plan yeah. would be and how we'd set up. So we've been completely different with, with what happened with Gary Monk, didn't it, for those few months? Yeah. And then it almost flipped back the other side when we then appoint Tony Pulis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When Pulis got the job, the job. What was your first sort of like thought? What were your, your reactions when he got the job? Do you know what it is for me? I'm a massive, massive fan of Tony Pulis. Right. And I have been for Why? years. I just really like. I just really like the guy. I just think he's a fan. I just yeah, think. You, I just you like think, him as a person or as? No, a... I think he's a good manager. 
I think he's a good person. I know he hasn't maybe he's had successful spells in other places. He's had success. He's had yeah, success yeah, at West Brom. Yeah, it's what you define success, success, isn't it? But well, he's made a bit that like, them fans talk about him and say, oh, he's this, he's that, he's the other. Yeah, well, let's remember, let's remember he was a defender back in the day. He can't play very defensive. I've seen, you when know. You, when you listen to the national radio stations yeah. and you talk sports and your Radio 5 lives, and the West Brom fans on and the Stoke fans are coming on and they're all singing from the same hymn sheet. Mm. Yeah, that, that, that's what concerns me. People say it's very boring, but if boring gets the results, then what's the problem? I don't think it's boring, James, do you? No, I think, I think it's, fans do yeah, I think it's very repetitive, but yeah. it's not boring. In fairness, I, I wouldn't say I've been bored by what I've seen since he I came on. Bored. I think I've been pleasantly surprised by some of the attacking play, yeah. um, and it hasn't all been purely set pieces. Now, whether that changes next season, I don't know, because a lot's going to depend on who he brings in. But... I think I've been pleasantly surprised because I must admit, like you said, uh, Guesty, when you, you got the job, you looked at message boards and everything like that, and West Brom fans in particular yeah. were absolutely oh, yeah. slating, saying, oh, we'll get ready now, we want to have boring football, not yeah. going to be entertaining. But that hasn't been the case so far, so no. I'm willing to give the bloke a chance. I mean, to be honest, he more or less rescued our season this year, didn't he? Well, same yeah. with, with what, ninth from Monk was there, and then obviously he took us to fifth, yeah. so... You know, in terms of that, that's obviously another point. But I say I like Mew. I like. I do like Pulis. I do saying, like him a lot. Saying that, yeah, I don't think our positions changed that much mm. since Pulis has come. Because it's not positive. When Mung got sacked, we were only three points yeah, behind we Villa. We were in sixth. Yeah. 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 So, like you say, we, we we haven't lost or gained that much ground mm. since Pulis came in for me. You mm. know, the won and lost similar amounts of games. Yeah. But like you say, we are more solid at the back yeah. since. Uh, Pulis has definitely, come in. definitely. And the one constant throughout the season is obviously the players. I mean, we've had a change of manager, but in terms of the players, who's really impressed you this season? Who would you go for, Gasly? See, like at the start of the season when Stewie Downing, he, he yeah, was he sat was. with Harry Ned, Redknapp, I believe. He was one assigned for Birmingham yeah. and didn't have a squad number to come back in with with Gary Monk, not yeah. with Pulis. It was Gary Monk who mm. brought him back in, basically to ram Monk's words back down his throat. Yeah. And I, I think for how the season started for him and for what he's give, yes, he, he's really stood out for me. Yeah. Obviously, he hasn't got the, he's never been one for going round players, Joey, yeah, yeah. but he always got that ball in the box. But like you say, he's a different footballer now. And yeah, he's a clever player at all to, in the head, isn't he? To it, witness the, his desire, mm. it, it's 100% every yeah. game, and like you say, every player makes bad crosses and yeah. straight passes, but yeah, for his desire and his commitment, yeah, yeah it's Joey. For you. Yeah. Do you know what? Do you know what? Right? There's a couple for me. I think um, Adam Clayton of late. I think he's come on really, really strong. And obviously, there was always that swapping, swapping sort of Ledbetter and then Clayton coming one week. Ledbetter's been next, but I can't see Ledbetter getting back in the team no. of how well Clayton's played. Yeah. I think he's been fantastic. I think he's been fantastic. Just when obviously when Pulis has come back in, I also think more has been fantastic since yeah, he's yeah. coming as well. You know, he's a player that we definitely need to sign this summer, no matter what. And I think I've got only one eight million. I think that's I think that's what we've all heard. So if that's all they want for him. You would pay that, yeah, yeah. Do you, think, do you think as a midfield player, James AJ, Mo Besic, he's been brilliant for us. Mm -hmm. He's supposed to be a defensive midfielder, yeah. but he gets the ball and he carries it. Yeah. Do, I, I feel as if he holds on to it just that little bit too yeah. long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He I has a tendency to do that at times, but I think maybe that's because there's not many options in front of true, him, isn't it? True, I, think, yeah. I think we struggle sometimes with men in the box. Yeah, yeah, I think that was apparent, and we'll talk about the Villa games later on, but that, that was pretty apparent that last yeah. week, wasn't it, where people had the ball and they were looking up and there was just nobody well, making any that runs. Game, more Bessic had that shot, didn't he, in the second yeah. half, I mean, why? Yeah. But where was his option to put it in the box and let somebody off? Mm. People say give it to Friend, but Friend was more to the side. He gives it to him, he loses the ball, he loses the attack. Mm. And I agree with that. I think, I think, I think that's maybe why he holds on to it for too long, because there isn't an option in front of him. Mm. What about... I think the season has been a bit of a season of two halves in terms of some of the players, like you said yesterday, I thought Downing had an outstanding first half of the season. Yeah. Um, and then second half of the season, players that came to the fall were like better to join up. Yeah. But you've got to say a damn try or he's second half yeah, of the season, he was just on yeah. fire, wasn't he? Yeah, he's been class, hasn't he? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's been, he's been, he's been our go to man. And that's something that I do fear as well, though. Mm. He's, he's our only outlet. That's what it almost seems like. I think in the summer we've got to buy somebody. I mean, yeah, I know Stewie's getting on, but like I say, well, Stewie's been fantastic this season. But we need somebody else as well that we can go to because, like I say, my teams are figuring us out. Mm. Look at Villa in the playoffs, I mean, he couldn't do nothing against them. Yeah, yeah. Do you know I mean they have three or four players on him? I, I think that's time. where his football brain lets him down a bit, but mm. that's going to come as he gets older yeah. because he, he just stands, he doesn't go looking for pockets of space to get the yeah. ball. Yeah. Mm. Really, he is told by Pulis, you stay there yeah, till yeah. the ball comes to you. 
he, mu he must do because he doesn't go looking for it. No. No. But there's the occasion where he should be looking for it, or the ball mm. should be going over the top. Yeah. And he's not the type of player yet who'll chase a ball. He's nowhere near he the finish start. No, is he? he likes it to feed. Yeah, still yeah. got a lot more to learn. Yeah, yeah. but he's yeah. devastated. Like you say, over even three or four yards, he oh, can yeah, take can, two players yeah. out of yeah. the game and yeah. create and something. Ball on away, man. The, the thing he did in that second half to uh, David Weir especially yeah. slow down to his pace and just, just yeah. went past him if he yeah. wasn't there. You know, the thing, it. the thing is, we had him Karanka with him, and Karanka always had him on his side. Mm -hmm. Whether it was whether he was attacking down the left or yeah. if we were attacking down the right. Karanka was always there shepherding him, mm -hmm. but <laughs> that must have restricted the kid, yeah, yeah. having your gaffer stood over you yeah. all the time. And then Pulis has come in and basically he's told him what he's wanted, mm -hmm. he's going to stay in the team, and he's produced, yeah. do you know what I mean? And he's absolutely, like you say, what Pulis yeah. has done I for I think him. that's it, that's a big plus point for Tony Pulis, isn't it? The, yeah. the transformation in that lad's form. Um, he certainly he's come on yeah. leaps and bounds, hasn't he, since Christmas? A lot. There's a lot of players improved yeah. under Pulis. Yeah. George Friend was having a hard time. Yeah. I know. He, obviously, we spoke to his dad at Bristol City, and he still wasn't quite fit. Mm -hmm. But he was starting to come back. He was starting to come back to somewhere near his best. Yeah. But he, he started to perform against under Pulis. Ayala was once Pulis at Ayala was just incredible yeah. well I remember you know people I mean? saying after he got sent off against yeah. Derby never put a shirt on again don't, he nowhere near a bullet so yeah, yeah. towards the end of the season probably our best defender yeah. and scoring at the other end very nice yeah. goal scorer he finished on didn't yeah. the season <laughs> like seven yeah. goals and three yeah. assists or something yeah. Yeah. do you know what I mean for a defender Unreal, unbelievable, it? Like, unbelievable. And then you had Brit started off like macaroni. Yeah. <laughs> you know what centre I mean? Centre forward. Yeah. Curse of the centre <laughs> forward. Yeah. Out place, isn't it? And yeah. he starts scoring lots of goals. And then yeah. obviously Pulis comes in and changes the full system, yeah. which I think affected him really bad. Talking of signings and Brit Sombolonga, who would you say has been the best signing? I know mainly um, Gary Monk made the signings because Pulis didn't add too much in January. Who would you say has been the signing of the season for us? Oh. Guess you would you go for? Definitely Darren Randall. Don't say that. That's Definitely. what I was going to say then. Well, don't no, say no, that. Because you know, I'd, I'd agree with that. Why, See, why would even as far as the Fulham game, we're getting into yeah. October, the Fulham game, and there was people still coming on asking for Dimmy back. And I'm um, thinking, just leave, Dimmy's got the best seat in the house for yeah. every game. Just leave him there. <laughs> Apart just, from his restaurant. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. <laughs> just leave Dimmy in the best seat, you know, because yeah. this man is class. He's yeah, yeah. cool, he's calm. And that, that's what you want behind you. Yeah. He doesn't flap. Yeah. The, the only thing I don't like when he, he lets the ball come on to him and he, yeah. he likes, he a, a bit he on, likes yeah. to sidestep the centre yeah, forward yeah, now yeah. and again, you know yeah. what I mean? But yeah. da definitely Darren Randolph, yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Agree with that, mate. I agree with you. £5 yeah. million, pounds, like, what a bargain that yeah. was. You know what I mean? He was like West Ham's number one, money not he? Yeah. Last season as well, or should I say season before? I'm going to count last season, last season. But I say Darren Randolph. You know, he's a, he's a fantastic goalkeeper in this yeah. league. Let's yeah. be honest, probably probably one of the best. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I know Johnson from Aston Villa is good, but you've got to put him up there as well. Yeah. I think he's been fantastic. Yeah, like definitely. He's been very solid for us. Um, in terms of performances, then what would you say was our best performance of the season, home or away? What's been the best one? I'm just Ooh. throwing that one at you a bit. Do you know what it is? The first one that comes in mid there. Quite a few pressing away, but I think. Yeah. The best one that we've been in atmosphere and everything else like Derby away. I knew we were gonna say that. That was class. That was that, even that performance more best yeah. as soon as he scored for his friend top in and his face when he scored, I mean obviously the passion yeah. in his face and everything else he was Was that because there was so much riding on that yeah, game? I think do you think it that was. was and they delivered in a big big game? But we're had to step up, we're had to win that game, do you know what I mean? It was a game we had to win, we couldn't go there and draw whatever, but everyone was up for it as well. I think everyone was a little bit nervous about, but everyone was more confident than anything. That's what we've expected as Borough fans yeah. over yeah. the years. And when yeah. these big games start, when you can start and get that big game feel, yeah. that's when the fans start getting yeah. up for it. And yeah. that, you start seeing strange faces at games. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it was <laughs> no, no offence there. Like every, everyone should come to games, but yeah, absolutely. you know what I mean? But like you say, that Derby game, unreal. it was unreal. Well, like, I think it was in, in your interviews after the game, oh, how everybody was outside the ground. He got mobbed that many times. I don't know. It was a really good, really you know good I mean, even at one point, I me mean, now, even at one point, we were stood the ground, was just like shaking yeah. money. Yeah. But there was also QPR away when a yeah. scored his first goal. Yeah. That that was kind of special. It was, that was, that was a and that's a ground we don't normally do well no. there, and yet we turned them over. Preston three, away was good though. Yeah, yeah. two we've one down. To, and like you say, considering our away form hasn't been great, we, we've had some good away wins. Yeah, yeah. So, but like you say, Derby County. That was the one for you, yeah. lads, and yeah. On yeah, a personal Derby. note, yeah, for away games. 
Craven Cottage is a most amazing place yeah. to go watch football. So you open Villa win then on uh, Saturday? But Aston Villa, <laughs> Villa Park. Yeah, Villa Park. Yeah. Yeah. Three times this season. Yeah. I mean, we've yeah. said the honour of going there, but yeah. every time I go to Villa Park, especially for me, it's just amazing, especially when you're sitting that way and you look out to all the Holtons and all that. It's, that, just, it's a special it's ground. Label, when, it, when it was all standing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you just go on for it. Yeah, it's a very special ground. Well, yeah. So on the flip side from that, what about worst performances? See, because you've, you've got a few to choose from. <laughs> um, and in fairness, I would say, yes, you would pick a few from the Gary Monkey, but there's also been one or two games while uh, Tony Pulis has been manager yeah. that haven't been impressive either. Yeah, Cardiff away under Pulis. Yeah. Was yeah. dire. There was, there's no outlet like, was say, if he's a man motivator, that there was no motivation in that team at all that day. Right. And then obviously you go back to the Monk era, the Bristol City away. That was that, that was, was tragic. To, to that see game. so many Borough that was fans awful. there. Yeah. And for them to put that performance in. Five and a half hours it took us to get there, Mill, man. Millwall away. It's just it was so so destroyed. I think definitely in the first half of the season, when we came up against teams that were above us, everyone mm. knew the stat. Yeah. When we played teams above us, we just rolled over. Sheffield United away yeah. was bad. As soon as they scored, yeah. the first, first 30 half. seconds. First half, yeah. As soon as they hit that shot, it went back. But as soon as went back, yeah. you look at yourself and you think, I don't know. That was almost like the, the exact yeah, opposite man. of Derby, where people went with a lot yeah. of expectations, a big game, and we just didn't deliver in that yeah. first half. Like you say, second half, down to 10 men, mm. we did, yeah. and, and Fabio was a bit of a catalyst. Yeah, Millwall that was night. bad, I agree with guessing. Millwall was like yeah. the turn up, you know, when you do our journey. Yeah. And again, I think Borough and Europe sold out, didn't we, Millwall away? Especially that top yeah. tier. Mm. I was, mean, the atmosphere, uh, the atmosphere is good, and then all of a sudden they score, and you think, oh, we poor old man. Yeah. So there we were, we were fifth in the season, uh, in the league table at the end of the season. But who, in your, in your opinion, lads, were the best team we faced? Got any takers for Sunderland? <laughs> yeah, they were a good team, weren't they? <laughs> you know, <laughs> Sunderland, you know, they're a oh, North East team, yeah. you know, and they say we're not their rivals and, yeah. you know, we've got nothing to do with them, but it is nice to beat them. Of course it is. It, it, you know, it's nice to beat Newcastle, it's nice to beat Leeds, but like you say, we, we don't have a genuine derby. No. You know, we're just a small team in Yorkshire, as they say, you know That's what I mean? That's right, we've won more but, than them two in the last 30, 40 yeah, years. So we, yeah. Yeah. It's, it, for me, it's just another long trek away day without Sunderland yeah. being in our league. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah that's true. Um, so would you say? So do you think Wolves have been the best team in the league? Wolves this year? have been. Wolves, Wolves were a good team to watch at the Riverside. They weren't the best team at the Riverside. So. I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say the best, but no. I mean, I say man, they were good. They were good, but best, that, the best. For me, know. that day Wolves were really physical. Yeah, they, they really put. Themselves. They've got both sides to their yeah. game, and they've got skillful players, but they can also put it about a bit, yeah. which I think you need in the Championship, yeah. don't you? Best team away I've seen was Bristol City. They, they were outstanding. Just well organised, weren't they, Bristol yeah. City away? We couldn't break them down and. I say, man, it was a cut of courage of an own goal that maybe he's, maybe he's helped us get back into it, but obviously it was too late by then, wasn't yeah, it? But yeah. Bristol City, I mean, even Cardiff, I thought, I thought Cardiff were organised. Yeah. Yeah. We hardly got any sort of chances. That's that what sort I think we're going to be a bit like next year, you know. I think we're going to be set up very much like Cardiff, the same sort of attempt that we might not be we have flashed to, stay a to tight. watch. We have to be a tight team. But I think that's what we're going to be like next we season. We have to be a team that people. We have to be a team that teams come to and they don't expect to get anything off. Yeah. That's sort of team we've got to be like next season. So how did you how do you feel like teams felt coming to the Riverside and Middles were going to a way? Did how would you? I think teams probably felt very comfortable coming to the Riverside yeah. before Christmas, especially when Gary Monk was yeah, in I Champions. I think they thought, "Blow my neck! Can't believe how many gaps we're getting." This is yeah. Middlesbrough we played the last few yeah. years. And then after Christmas, I think when Monk uh, had left and Pulis came on board, I think it was very different. Then wasn't it? Yeah. it was, uh, I think it was when Monk's first game was at Aston Villa and Brooklyn got beat one at home. But even yeah. then, every, uh, I think Pulis's first game. Yeah, I think opposing yeah. teams still thought then, "Oh, these are still an easy team to beat." Up yeah, because yeah. you know what I mean. That sort of stuff. You know what I mean, but. Especially underneath Monk, it was one of them, one of them, as I'm sure, away teams came. You felt it would be easy. That, that, that was a problem all the way through the season, though. We'd go goal down, and there was there was nothing. There was nothing. I'll we ask you the question on Pop. Go on, Robert. Yeah. Go on, mate. Did Gary Monk fail because he just didn't pick a, pick a team and stick with it? And Pulis has, or is Pulis done something totally different? Do you reckon Gary Monk could have been where we are now? If he'd have just kept that same team. So you're saying Gary Monk failed. Gary Monk won one game less than Pulis all yeah. season. Monk's problem was... Well, he, he failed because he got sacked. He, he, it's the yeah, failure. Yeah. He, he, he couldn't go with a settled back four. You, yeah. you didn't know... Yeah. I just don't think it was back. settled anyway. No. Was it really best 11, no. Did he just, he just, he just saying, chopped and changed everything. He didn't his best 11. All these top managers don't. You, so you build from the back. Mm. And we didn't. 
yeah. you know what I mean? And we we we, we had no spine. Yeah. Had absolutely nothing. I, I remember when we played Barnsley away in October, and we got a draw. We ended up drawing two each, and we were behind twice. And I watched the game, and I thought, I, I haven't got a clue what's going on here. Yeah. And it's it looked like the players. Like the players, the players were all over the place. Yeah. There, was just, there was gaps all over yeah. the place. And it was What's players the charging the around. Game? Is it the end of it? Oh, the brother fans come out going, good point. And I mean, I saw a guest after the game. I thought, oh, I've got to kick off here. Because there's no way it was at a good point. As much as I like, as much as I like Tykes TV and all that, listen, I give it to him. But it was a good point. Because uh, we, listen, like I ain't getting back into the we were all there. over. We should have came away from there yeah, but with yeah, our but tails between our legs. Against them. It was, and we can't see the fairly sloppy goals, in my opinion, in that game. If I believe right, we equalised and they went straight yeah, up. But the second goal, yeah. I and mean, you see, it was one header over the top. Yeah, was it? Beat about fifteen hundred yeah. men. And it went straight in the back of there. You look at it and you think, hang on, I was like, yeah. what's going on yeah. here? Yeah. It's gone in. Yeah, well, I get that now. It's ended two two as yeah. well. Yeah. Just, in, just in case I didn't know that mess. Yeah, right. Answering your question, Robin, a roundabout way, I think if we went back to Barnsley four months later with Tony Pulis in yeah. charge, we wouldn't have drawn that game. We'd have yeah. won that game. Yeah, yeah, so I, I think. I, I agree personally, yeah, yeah. I, I do agree. I think if we had Pulis at the beginning of the First season, thing Pulis done I it. think we'd have reached the top two personally. Yeah. yeah. Once yeah. Pulis come in, he put he made sure George Friend was playing every game, Ryan Shotton. And they defended the width yeah. of the eighteenth yard area. They they never moved out of that line, that width. Um, if Friend went, Shotton moved across and we became a three. Yeah. If Shotton went, Friend moved across. That the width of the penalty box was always defended. Yeah. And that, that's what Peel has brought, you know. Yeah. He, 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 he closed all the gaps, mm. made us solid, you know. We, we, for some reason, we still conceded, mm. but it was, you felt better yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you had more confidence it was more of a shock you. when someone scored yeah, against us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Sean's in great as well playing right back this season. No. Hey? I you still know, think he'd be better suited being the centre half. Yeah, he would be. I think, I think he's stepping to be a right back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He hasn't done a bad job being a right back. I think he's done a job. He's, he's done a job for Pulis, hasn't he? I think. I yeah, don't that's think, what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. he's not a right back though. Owens is, he? is absolutely unbelievable. You know, he's, <laughs> he's no Danny Alves, but in the championship, I think he's done an all right job at right back. Yeah. He hasn't done too yeah, bad of a job. I don't think he'd ever get Danny Alves in the same <laughs> sentence. As you shot. never know, mate. He's getting older. He might come to Borough one day. Probably been signing on FIFA. Yeah. But like you say, as soon as Pulis come in, Fabio was injured. But that's in, a in games be late on this, like you say, mm. in in the recent past, uh, in the game screaming out for something different from yeah. Adama, you know, yeah. that, that's where Pulis got on my right. nerves a bit, James. So do you think with the job he's done, Pulis, he got the absolute maximum out of that team to get him into the playoffs, or do you think he should have, with that team, got us top two this year? <laughs> Bear in mind what he took over when he came in, and we were about seventh or eighth in the league. Do you think playoffs was acceptable for this year? I still believe that when Munt got sacked a couple of days before Christmas, there was enough games to get us in the top two. Right. And with a squad, he inherited. Yeah. And like you say, people say none of them are they're not his players. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he's inherited that squad. He's an experienced manager. Mm. I think he should have got the best out of that squad. Right. And yeah, I, I thought we should have pushed for right. top two, James. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, that's what I was like saying. Just like you say, scruffy yeah. defeat to wait at Norwich and yeah, that one. Things yeah, like Norwich. That. Yeah. Well, to be fair, I think it was a send off, wasn't it? Uh, same man, same man. We've had a lot of early red cards, well, a lot of cost us games. But when Gusted got sent off, we went in the game age, yeah. Yeah. It, that just added to our misery, Gusted mm. getting sent off that day. It summed the game up. Yeah. At Norwich, that's yeah. the type of game. The minute it he got sent off, be. though, a down triangle went up front, and you knew then he, it was just the game was done, wasn't it? Yeah. As soon as they scored, you knew then it was going to be a defeat because we just couldn't we just couldn't get close to them. They shut up shop, and that's what most teams have done this season, if you notice. It was a day one no lead. Best example being Aston Villa. Came down here and got the one that obviously as soon as they scored and then Borough. It's even becoming too much of a trend in football. Yeah, of course it is, of course it is. Teams now are getting the goal in front. That's how team wins game, eh? That's, that's, it's that's not how you win. It? No, of course it's not football. It's but not football, mate. I suppose if you get these teams' results, then it's, it's you know, nothing wrong with it, I suppose, mm. isn't it? I was just, yeah. I was just going to say now, the dust settled it's almost a week now since the Villa yeah. games. Yeah. What's your overriding memory of those two games? We've got to the semi final of the playoffs. And then we've got then, mm. do you sort of feel a little bit short-changed at the end of it or do you think, well, do you know what, the better team won't accept that? And yeah, I think I think Villa are more organised, um, you know, but I think I think, I think um, certainly one memory is going to stick in is calling out John Terry. And I meant every word I said, but uh, yeah, I would, say, I, would say, I would say Villa were very much organised against us. Yeah. But even in the second leg of football, we were in that first half, you know, George Friends trying to create something on the left. You know, Bob obviously had the chance to be down across the bar. You know, and even in the first game, we had the chances. Yeah. 
We just could. We just. We just. I thought Borough just like that cutting edge. Yeah, it was very close. I mean, four times we played Aston Villa. Yeah, four times. I keep repeating it myself. Yeah. Four times we failed to score yeah. against Steve Bruce's team. Apart yeah. from the cup. Four games we played against Aston Villa in the in the league. Yeah, so we, yeah, had, we had five yeah, games. Yeah, we yeah. scored two in the league cup yeah, game. Yeah, four yeah. games in leagues that in games that yeah. matters. Yeah. I could four be wrong, but I think Pulis v Bruce goes back a bit longer than that. I think he's always struggled to score against Bruce. But you know what? You can flip it round in the five games. In three of the five games. Villa didn't score a goal and they scored two goals the same as us and scored one at our place in the yeah. league one in the playoff I think the two teams aren't that dissimilar I think quite evenly matched um, I just think I don't think Pulis got it far wrong in the second leg he kept us in the games I think if we'd have opened it up too early and they'd have scored in the first half I think it would have been game over um, but he, he didn't change the he second, changed it very late didn't that he, was the, the frustrating leg. thing yeah like I look at the game different to you and AJ mm, mm. I, I'd and the majority of Borough fans, before the kickoff, were wanting two up front. They were wanting yeah. Fabio in as full back. And you knew it wasn't going to happen. If they go out, like you say, if they go out and they give 100%, mm. and you get beat 3 2, or you get beat 2 1. Yeah. But if you've, you've gone for it and you've been caught twice on the break, yeah. fair You can live with that, yeah. I, I can live with that. But yeah. to go out with a scruffy goal from a corner, mm. then to feel as if. We never had a shot on target. We didn't work Johnson. No. I don't care how many chances yeah. AJ's no, we created. No, yeah, no, yeah, I agree with we, that. We mate. didn't test Johnson. Mm. Like you said, James, it, it was just as a fan, you, you did feel as if they'd left someone out there, yeah. and, you, and you felt short changed. Yeah, yeah. The same. I was just silly out of those, and it didn't give him the goal. It was just make him something that comes off the back post. If he's had bench, stay there, mate. We just, it stays no nil. But you could was, see, you could see every player. Give one hundred. That's yeah. it, because I know I you could, you could there's see a few that. people afterwards yeah. that come out and slag them off and say, "No, no, no effort." They weren't bothered. That. You couldn't say that no. at all because every player actually put a shift. I got criticised on Twitter for, for putting out a tweet saying uh, players gave everything proud to be a D side. Yeah. There's something on that. I got criticised yeah. for it. People said, "People said, I don't know if you can say this." Two shots and target. I said, "Yeah, but if you look at if you look at the performance, they, they give everything." Just yeah, in yeah, second yeah. leg, yeah. you know what I mean? I mean, everyone wanted. You know what I mean? I mean, down Triore fell to the floor. I mean, I know everyone cries and whatnot, but. Do you know what I mean? You can, you can see in the face that they genuinely wanted to win that yeah. game. You know what I mean? They genuinely wanted it, but like I say, man, Villa, Villa are a very organised team. And yeah. like I say, good luck to them in the final because I'm sure I've, I'm sure Aston Villa v Fulham is going to be a great final. Yeah. But yeah. you know, it's you know one of them teams got to play us next season, and that's yeah. as simple as this. And that's what yeah. got to prepare for one of them. I think, like you say, John Terry and Chester. Mm. That what great combination. John Terry, he, he did, you know, he had the King Edwards out for two games. He, he didn't <laughs> yeah, break sweat. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, I've never liked John Terry all his career. <laughs> I've, I've obviously, I always felt he got caught under the ball. He was, yeah, he, yeah. I don't think he had a good game for England. Sorry, John. <laughs> but you know, to watch him in them two games, he was absolutely outstanding. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think if everything those two games they showed our limitations yeah. as a team this season. Yeah. We, we're not we're not a bad championship team, but we're not quite ready yeah. to go. Yeah. yeah, we're not far at this off. Minute, but we're not far off. Yeah. yeah, I think just rebuild. I think I think I think it's all about building the summer. Yeah, we brought got we brought got a really 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 good pre season. Mm -hmm. We've yeah. had a lot of signings AJ over the well, last few right, years, and I don't think there's any of them left at the club. Mm -hmm. Everyone Gary Monk brought in. Cool has been straight been away. on loan. Yeah, or, didn't he? Yeah, 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 same yeah, yeah. Spend the money on. I mean, you keep saying he's disrespectful of Steve Gibson and all so. I feel that he won't spend no money in the summer. How do you feel, James, a manager coming out saying, I don't want to spend none of the manager's money? Well, I think that's maybe where we missed the boat this season because I was disappointed with what he did in the transfer window in January. Yeah. I think if we'd have spent a little bit money in January, we could have got closer to the top yeah. two. Yeah. As soon as you saw that there was nobody really coming in in January, brought Bessic in, we missed the boat in terms of strikers. Yeah. You lost Gusted injured. And Mitrovic. Fletcher went out. Yeah. Mitrovic was a big oh. miss, but unfortunately, I think once he knew Fulham were in yeah. for him, that was it, yeah. it was going to go. Yeah. But there should have been other people lined yeah. up there to then rely on. It was lucky that we had Bamford in a bit of form, because if he hadn't have hit a bit of form, well, we wouldn't have made the playoffs, yeah. would we? So well, One of your guests said something before. Mm. Did he not spend money in January? Because if he did spend money, that's going to pile up pressure on mm. to then yeah. make sure we will get in yeah. the top two. Yeah. And the fact that he's left it a bit light gives yeah. him a bit of an excuse. Yeah. But he's still he's point, still yeah. saying he doesn't want to spend none of Gibson's money. But well, you know, there's like whatever whether you believe the club or whether you believe uh, the local media, there's thirty-five to forty million, million. coming from parachute yeah. payment. Yeah. Now, 
to all intents and purposes, we're led to believe that there's going to be some players leaving this summer. Yeah. Maybe some for big money. Yeah. Um, I mean, so try, try to Chelsea thirty million. A yeah. Point. Gibson's been really mentioned as well. Yeah. All, all big money. So then there's got to be some money spent this summer, hasn't there? Oh, got he's got to do summer. Yeah. yeah. Like you say, you can, see, you can see your Dama gone, Gibson yeah. gone. If and you've got the resign. players. You've got the players. Have, have they got the legs anymore? Has Adam yeah. Clayton got the legs? Has Stewie Down and got the legs? Mm. George Friend, Grant Ledbetter. They, See, they've been in our squad a long yeah. time now. Is Ledbetter still got it, man? I, I don't think. Nah. I don't think. As much as I love him, I know yeah, yeah. fans love him. Yeah. If he, I love Grant Ledbetter, but I don't think he's got the legs. If, no he, if he had it, he'd have still been in front of Clayton. Yeah. Because Clayton. Yeah. Like say whatever was going on, he always looked as if he'd spit his dummy out, yeah. and he was getting nowhere near when Pulis first came in. Yeah, but we've well, been rumoured with Robert Hoof as well. Yeah, you? I've seen that Robert Hoof. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> I want him back. You might as well uh, get him to trim these trees. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I'd have Ryan Sharp. Yes, yeah. oh, yeah. I'd have Shaqiri. I'd love to see. I don't know if it's yeah. gone, but it's yeah. massively underrated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What about a striker? Because like I say, we're we're a bit light on strikers. Yeah. Who would you like to bring in as a centre forward? I'd bring. Um, Personally, I'd bring in that kid from Newcastle. What's he called? Gale. Gale, Dwight Gale. Yeah, he's if you, pr- if you proven could get all of him. Yeah, it'd be awesome in the championship. Well, if, yeah. if, if you've got the likes of West Brom, Stoke, and Swansea trying to reduce the wage bills, you know, they, they have some good players in yeah. the squad. Still have Rodriguez I, 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 from I, I, uh, West just, Brom. Yeah. I'd have Rodriguez. Rodriguez, definitely. Yeah, I'd, I'd have him. I like you know Andes I mean. at Hull as I'd well. I'd have Morrison yeah. back. Someone like that. Yeah, and Andes. Yeah, just a big tag because you know he's yeah. going to go for a big target man up yeah. front. So it's someone that's just a little bit of a step up from Rudy yeah. instead, isn't it? Yeah. That's what you need. I think. Yeah. I think. I mean, even that annoyed me at Aston Villa when you brought him on. Rudy, come on, five. Didn't look anywhere. He's been injured for how long? You can't bring him to a game like this expecting to do a lot. Yeah. What What do you think was the, the problem with Jack Harrison? Why, why do you feel that we never Excellent seen nothing of him? Yeah, because a few times he came on, he actually contributed, didn't he? No, he did away. something. Burn away, got burn away. Him, like, Ip switch away. Yeah. Yeah, Ip switch away. I mean, I mean, obviously, me and Gasty and obviously Gab seen See, him. See, for, um, for, for some reason, our bosses have put a fan TV like us to leave 20 minutes before the end. So all these, <laughs> oh, ca- fair, yeah, all these cameos. You've still never seen him play. All these, like, we've missed the Sombolonga's ridiculous penalty. We missed that. We missed three goals at Ipswich the other week. Yeah. I missed Ben Gibson's goal at Nottingham Forest and got told off for. Why didn't you mention Ben Gibson's goal? Because I didn't know we'd scored, sorry. You need a rebate on your season yeah, ticket, don't you? Yeah. Ticket money, yeah. But yeah, I've never seen none of these cameo performances of yeah. Harrison. Or, yeah. you know, like. He's a great player. Like I, say, I don't know if you were there, though, for Cardiff. Well, obviously, I know you were Cardiff. I didn't know if you were there to see him come on. Hmm. I think the last like 10 minutes or oh, something. And he came on, he came on the left-hand side. I've been putting the sugar in there by then, he but, Well, like I say, man, like I say, man, he came on the left-hand side, and he was fantastic. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's providing something, and in I'll that game... I'll take your word for it, mate. <laughs> like, honestly, in that game, Bottle looked dead and out, one against Cardiff, you know what I mean? We couldn't get through him. But he came on, he brought a bit of lease to life, and I thought he was a decent player, mate. So hopefully, I'm hoping that Bottle do get him back. Yeah. I'm hoping that Pewis gives him a chance, he's a decent player, yeah. he, you know what I mean? He's only young. Oh, I think it's a good point, oh, definitely. Oh, James, AJ, who oh, oh, were you sad Pewis let go out among signings? Braithwaite. Personally, uh, yeah, maybe um, Christy a little bit. Christy, I was but, uh, I love Christy. Christy yeah, 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 yeah um, I love Christy. I thought he was fantastic. I don't think he was the best defensively, but he's great going forward. Yeah, he yeah, had a bit of pace on the right hand side. Yeah, with Braithwaite, do you think it was just a Pulis thing, or had his dummy gone way before Pulis come in? Do you think because yeah. Yeah. one minute he's on video eating a palm on, he loves yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, he's wanting to talk to everyone, yeah. put a fan TV, and then. Aye. You, He's getting off the team bus and running straight in. I don't think, room, I don't think the season turned out to be what he was expecting or what he thought when he yeah. came here. I think he came here from Toulouse thinking, do you know what, I'll have a bit of this championship, we're going to do this league this yeah. year. And he found out Blum and it's harder than I thought. And it's, yeah. I, I think don't, he thought he was going to be a never Zabora. Yeah, he was going to be the yeah. main man in this yeah. division yeah. and he yeah. wasn't, was no, he? No. wasn't the main man in the team. So no. it didn't work out for him. So I'd be surprised if he's back next season, if I'm being no. honest. They reckon he's got some clause in yeah. his contract, then he there. Uh, and also, like Julian Dessart, I thought he left, but apparently he's still here. He put a tweet on earlier on. <laughs> in a nice way to say goodbye, <laughs> Julian Dessart, though, imagine, imagine still mentioning his name. I thought everyone <laughs> forgot about him. <laughs> but he put on Twitter earlier, um, he said something like, Sorry, I'm so sorry, but all I want to do is go abroad to try out new cultures. Hashtag Borough, and I thought he really was a player. I thought he was under Derby years ago. But apparently, Julian Dessart is still getting out midfield for next season. 
be interesting. There'll definitely be a lot of changes next season. Yeah. What do you think the aim's got to be for next year? Is it got to be top two it's next season? To, it's got to be promotion. Yeah. No matter how you get it, it's got to be promotion. I mean, Borough can do it. You know, I mean, we did it before. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, went for the playoffs, got beat, but came back even stronger the season after. Mm -hmm. We've got to do the same thing again, yeah. man. We've got to be, you know, I mean, we have to get promotion for team. I, I remember playing Sheffield United. I think it was our festival game of the season. Was yeah. And yeah. they had the momentum of coming up. Yeah. We obviously we were on the down and going down, mm -hmm. and I was talking to Sheffield fans. I'm saying, surely the with the season you've had coming into this league, you've got to carry it on. Yeah. And they've said, no, we'll be happy with the bottom six. You know what I mean? Staying out of uh, relegation. Yeah, yeah. Be lucky to get away from here without a three or four. Yeah. But that momentum. So you're looking at Blackburn coming up, Wigan coming up, two cracking away two there. Cracking yeah, two cracking both, away yeah, there. And then, yeah, yeah. Most probably whatever Shrewsbury, Shrewsbury or Rotherham. Oh, Rotherham. Do you know Rotherham. what? That'll be a yeah. joke. Like, Rotherham I'm be Shrewsbury uh, next season. Well, my daughter lives in Shrewsbury. Yeah. I love yeah, yeah, I'm hoping to go that. there, me actually. Sorry, I'd like sorry to go to Shrewsbury. Beautiful place yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. And then you've got. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It is actually. Clubs. Love Shrewsbury. West Brom, Stoke, yeah. Yeah. and Swansea yeah. coming down. But, like you say, we, we've got to compete with them three. That's coming down. Yeah, because Hull and Sunderland are upheaval in the club. Both of them, and they've both had terrible seasons. So, hopefully. Them clubs coming down can keep that stability in amongst the clubs, yeah. so they're going to be a threat. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we we just have to go bigger and better. Look yeah. at yeah. it's been out this week the amount of money Newcastle spent to get out that division. Yeah. Should we be looking at, to do that? How much is it? It's a gamble, isn't it? Um, well, I, I don't know. But I think the they made a they made, yeah. they made a loss of about ninety million yeah. pound. Really? Just to get out so that if way. they hadn't have gone up, that would have absolutely financially yeah. crippled them. Could have yeah. could have finished them. Yeah. But they took the gamble to do it, and, the, and it worked out. So, yeah. so just before we finish, lads, what do you think next season? Well, like you say, it's been a long nine month. Yeah. It was like giving birth to the park the other night. <laughs> the pain was out. Dare say that the pain was, was yeah. the pain was much worse than labour. I think <laughs> sat watching that, but next season, like you say, up here, let's get some decent yeah. signings yeah. in. But like. Just a touch, quick one. The first player we're linked with is a six foot five Croat. Yeah, yeah I've seen that. Fits, that. fits the build, doesn't it? Hopefully, like you say, Pulis will his cap and his trainees will work the yeah. magic and he'll get us off. Fingers crossed. For you, I mate. feel the same way. Actually, man, we'll have a good pre-season, in my opinion. Do you know what I mean? We've got to really hit the ground running pre-season. Yeah. I follow, like you say, I we'll follow momentum and confidence into the league and see where else we end up. Hopefully, none of these daft Tuesday night games to for these ones here, away <laughs> or Bristol. Give us them on a Saturday. Oh, Shrewsbury. Shrewsbury. <laughs> I say, man, you know what I mean? It's just in a weird day, isn't it? Yeah. But I say, man, it's all about, it's all about just having a good pre season, in my opinion. And then carrying it Well, like you say, Pulis has got his pre season with us, so. Yeah. You know, hopefully, it out. And hopefully our boss will send us to uh, my pay for the pre-season for the weekend. <laughs> you never know though, eh? Well, my passport's in there, <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> Well, thanks for taking part in the end of season review, lads. Really enjoyed Thank it. You, uh, and hopefully this time next year we'll be celebrating promotion back to the Premier League. Before we go, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Keep up to date with all things to do with Borough over the summer. Um, and any future shows we may have, we might be doing one or two things during the World Cup, so keep your eye out for that. And thanks again, Borough fans, for all your support during the season, your contributions, your interviews with the lads on the weekend, at the games, all the stuff, all your contributions, much appreciated. Uh, really enjoy it, because without you, there's no Borough fan TV. Mm. So thanks again, everybody. Thank you. Thank so, you. yeah, well done, you're the best. OK, until next time, Red and White, you and me, Monday at 6, Borough fan TV. Up the Borough. Up the Borough. Up the Borough.